common to most of us that Zambia's agriculture is dominated by crops, maize in particular. As a country, we spend more than half of our agriculture sector funding promoting maize. Yet, we are aware that poverty remains unusually high, around 70%. One underappreciated fact is that at about 70% of smallholder farmers have access to less than two hectares of land. Assuming that maize yields go up by 100% from the current 2.5 metric tons to about five metric tons in a year, that farmer will get a turnover of about 7,500 kwacha in a year. Now compare that to a sector that is yet to receive much spotlight, the fisheries. If a farmer has a tilapia fish pond with a recommended 20 by 30 meters by the fisheries department, the fisheries department in the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock estimate that with the proper inputs and management, that farmer will get a turnover of about 50,000 to 60,000 kwacha from a pond in one cycle. That cycle is about five to six months, which means that farmer can double their turnover within a year. Now 20 by 30 meters is only about 6% of a hectare. So in essence, a land constrained farmer will find that being in the fishery sector, the aquaculture to be specific, is a better option of raising oneself out of poverty. This film is about an engine that could change the lives of many Zambians in rural areas. Zambia's fishery sector. In part one of this documentary, we focus on the capture fisheries whose natural stocks have been declining over the years. It was established that with increased domestic fish demand and pressure on the natural fisheries, improved fish production and supply in the country can only come from aquaculture, the focus of this documentary. The number or the amount of fish that an average fisher is catching has reduced over the year because there are more fishers now catching. We have to look at the population growth and also the migration of people to areas of to the fisheries areas. So you see that there isn't so much potential in the couch in the capture sector, but in the aquaculture se uh, subsector. As opposed to capture fisheries which involve the harvesting of naturally occurring fish resources in the naturally occurring water borders such as lakes and rivers. Aquaculture is the cultivation, propagation or farming of fish through either the cage system on water borders or the pond culture. With nearly a quarter of the available fish in the country being imported, President Edgar Lungu expressed concern after touring Palawana Fisheries, an aquaculture private company in Chongwe on 5th August 2015. President Lungu called for a stop to the growing trend of important fish and said this must be reversed as many Zambians are capable of producing sufficient stocks for home consumption and export. This is a clear indication of the fact that the aquaculture fisheries is receiving attention from the highest office. Zambia is endowed with 12 million hectares of water, which has remained underexploited despite providing a huge resource for extensive aquaculture fisheries. Aquaculture uh, um, is also one of the alternatives to ensure that we should be able to uh, uh, give space for the fishes in the natural water bodies. And uh, up to now, uh, it's very strange when we go out there to explain to our people, you find they tell you, what are you talking about? Fish farming? No. How can you farm fish? So it's a, it's a new concept, but people have to get to understand this. And I think that slowly people have been able to appreciate. During the fishing ban, for example, those that are, are participating in aqua fishing, they've got no ban on their fish. So they can harvest any time they want. And uh, uh, you can imagine uh, with the demand, prices go up. It's very good uh, source of um, uh, income and uh, resources. The aquaculture fisheries has the potential to contribute much more to Zambia's economic development. However, as a subsector of the agricultural sector, 
the aquaculture fisheries contributes less than 1% to the country's national gross domestic product. While the contribution of the aquaculture subsector is a small percentage, fisheries are crucial to Zambia's rural economy as a source of income and proteins. Aquaculture uh, production is um, mainly the key because in some areas they don't have fish availability from the, the capture sector. But aquaculture, fish ponds can be um, constructed and farmers can start producing their own fish. And at the end of the day, we would expect um, an improvement even in the, their um, cash, their incomes, as well as their nutrition status. The tilapia species is one of the main uh, fish species which has been cultured by the cage and the pond uh, fish farmers. Why is that so? Okay, from time immemorial, um, when fish farming started in Zambia, uh, tilapias were the ones that were widely promoted and widely accepted. Uh, so it's from that background that uh, tilapia is widely accepted as opposed to the other species. But we have other species that we are culturing here that are potential uh, culturable species for fish farmers to take up on board. Okay. So I would mention that we have um, the tilapias, like you have mentioned, which are of various species. We have the Orochromis andersoni with the three spotted brim, which is the Alcafio brim. Uh, we have the, the Agroecomis macrocha, which is the green-headed brim. We have tilapia rendery, and we have uh, now tilapia. But that one is specifically for research purposes. Uh, the other species that we have are catfish and catfish. But catfish is not widely accepted because, you know, there could be some religious connotations to that. The cage system has been rapidly expanding since 2004. Its upscaling has been witnessed in Lex Mweru, Bangwaulu Complex, Kariba, and Tanganyika. We are challenging we are piloting cage fishing on our water so that even those who are involved in capture fishing can learn from those who are involved in cage fishing so that maybe through that you can also reduce the, the, the pressure on the lake. Wild fish diseases theft and pollution are well-known challenges. The cages have great advantage in that they have a relatively lower investment cost as they use the already existing water body compared to the pond culture. The pond culture has been the main fish farming system in the country. Free fisheries has been around for more than 30 years, but we currently have 133 ponds which uh, make up 93 hectares of pond area. Uh, last year we produced 1,270 tons of fish and we hope to get higher than that this year. Alongside the commercial fish farmers, the number of smallholder fish farmers participating in aquaculture fisheries has been increasing over the years. Beatrice Katongo is a small-scale fish farmer practicing cage fish farming on Lake Kariba since 2014. I cage in the for the cage. So depth is 4 meters. But if we have a man, she will 5 meters. No, we have a mule. Evania, we have a little to save you. We have a stream. Ingemisende <laughs> Rwine <laughs> Utuma 25 na utuma 10. Utuma 50 kgs. Small fish farmers like Beatrice can play a role in contributing to improved fish production in the country. 
really only small farmers can produce fish at the at the required price for the majority of Zambia. So I think the 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 way to reducing the fish the fish deficit would be would be through small farmers. As a country, we've spent a considerable amount of time and resources promoting maize in in Zambia. The small holders sector in Zambia has been largely a maize driven sector because that is what we ask them to to uh, to grow that is what we ask them to focus on the result has not been pleasing we still have close to 70 percent of the rural sector in Zambia living in poverty it's it's terrible it's it's something that should not happen there's one underappreciated fact as to why maize cannot lift the smallholder farmer out of poverty. Most of them, over 70%, have access to only two hectares or less land. A sector that is often ignored is the fishery sector, aquaculture. The recommended 20 by 30 meter pond can yield a farmer or a fish farmer in one cycle, which is five to six months, up to 50 or 60,000 kwacha in a cycle. So in one cycle, the correct size, 20 by 30 minimum, the correct uh, inputs, the correct management, a farmer can get 50 to 60,000 in a cycle. Meaning, in a year, they could be getting 50 times two or 60 times two, up to 120,000 in turnover compared to 7,500 kwacha if even in the best year with the best practices um, that's what they'll get from maize. So what this means is that if we're going to get our farmers out of poverty, most of them who are land constrained, there's a higher chance that they'll get out of that poverty if they're in another sector such as fisheries, aquaculture. Uh, to be to, to be exact so emphasis should be on agricultural diversification to help these farmers find opportunities that can get them out of this poverty trap we say that you are going to be a great deal of people who are going to be a great deal of people who are going to be a great deal Usombo shivusu masaa na nga chakweba tuwafalwa. Nga muafu miya muno, kuti muafu miya makilo ya nga mafu. Kwe na nga tuwafu miyo muifine muleka munaka, nga shukuru wapala, kuti kafu miya ama tanzi 3,000 ta, kgs. Hmm. Which is the 3 tons. Nishiri afina kuhino sana, nishiri afina kuhino sana. Mkwai, nga liafika fepa tembo quality, nishiri afina kuhino mkwai. Nishia kweba atinangu usombo la, Ngomomo inendela ndira shikuru nga pala kutu wako ata nangu 50, nangu kuchirapari 50, thousand. Given the climatic conditions and water resources, there is potential for the country to produce and export more fish from the aquaculture sector. However, while in its infancy, the subsector has been faced with a number of challenges. We are still have problems of raw productivity as I mentioned. I think 3.4 tons per hectare and uh, no, land-based aquaculture which are ponds and so, it's quite too low. So we need to do more research and find ways on how we can, uh, how we can, you know, you know, increase productivity. Once we increase productivity, we're going to reduce the cost and, and then we're going to have enough, uh, enough fish for, for, for consumption and for export. The unfair competition which is created by cheap uh, Far Eastern imports. They are coming in um, underpriced and if they are coming in let's say from the region uh, they are not paying any of the um, duties let's say within the Comesa or SADEC protocol. We are levied local council tax whereas the imports are coming in duty free. Um, I don't think uh, we are advocating for a ban on any imports. No, not at all. Must enhance the incentives to the aquaculture sector so that we are able to produce good
quality local product which will compete with any imports, which will enable us to compete as we grow our exports. Fish imports, first of all, let me say that uh, as government really would really love to get to a point where we should do stop these fish imports. But uh, with the deficits that we have, I don't know really whether we're going to be responsible to, to, to really ban on this fish. And I know that there are certain fishes which we are not allowing for imports and certain fishes we are allowing. And uh, all I can say is that first things first, I think it's for us to really be able to capacitate ourselves by way of getting to produce uh, enough fish to manage to uh, reach out to our people. When we have deficits, then we should be talking of exports. Before that, we cannot even talk about it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I also know that uh, there's been a complaint uh, by people bringing in fish illegally in this country uh, who are not even uh, uh, bringing revenue to our country. And I can tell you, uh, whoever is uh, watching us on this program, they must know that we, uh, we are aware of what is happening. And uh, very soon... Uh, they must not get themselves to uh, they must get themselves to blame when uh, the law shall visit them with regard to levies i know that uh, this is a thorny issue and it's in uh, ministry uh, as a ministry of course uh, our desire would be no levy should be uh, 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 put on our fishermen as well. they are growing this sector maybe i think it's uh, worth noting that uh, after uh, this we should be able to uh, get to round table and be able to discuss with our uh, counterparts, maybe from other from the ministries responsible, and see how we can be able to waive this if really it's an impediment um, uh, on the productivity of uh, the fish sector. So what you're seeing right now, where the site we're from, is one of the sites for Yalelo uh, fish cages. And uh, from what we understand, it takes about 30 tons of fish feet per day for all the six sites that Yalelo has here on In order for Zambian fish farmers to meet this large deficit, however, we're going to need a much larger increase in the available availability of fish feed. And towards that end, Yalelo is working on the organization of a world-class fish feed mill to be based here in Zambia which ensures that there's adequate supply of top quality, uh, reasonably priced fish feed to drive the growth of the industry. Just right now we are at the premises of Yalelo and this is one of probably the biggest hatchery here in Zambia. And just uh, uh, Mr. Swaga, Swaga here will take us through what really happens here. What do we have right now at this hatchery? Um, at this hatchery we have, in fact we have three types of ponds. Uh, what you see behind you are the holding ponds in which we keep uh, males and females uh, from tilapia separately and uh, we then take males and females which are ready for reproduction and put them in uh, the, the breeding ponds uh, which are much smaller and that you can see uh, over here. Annually we're talking about a production of 30 million uh, fry. Kafiwa Fisheries has also set up state-of-the-art fish incubators to grow their fish seeds and fingerlings. We have broodstock which uh, we imported from, from Namsai farms in Thailand uh, under a permit from the Department of Fisheries in conjunction with uh, Zambia National Service Chanyanya farm. Um, we have broodstock in tanks and in harpers. We collect eggs from them. Uh, we place the eggs in our incubators uh, for, for between two and five days. Once they've hatched, they go into a raceway. Uh, where they are hormone treated for 14 days. Uh, after that they are put into fingerling tanks and fed intensively for four weeks to reach what we call stocking size, which is about one and a half to two grams. And then from there they are stocked into the ponds at between seven and eight fish per meter squared. As for smallholder fish farmers, they are limited in mitigating some of these challenges. 
Yari kuria, kuria mle mona ama bloko side, kuria nga mle ya mona ama bloko. Eko ya vere. Bomba no mlandu wako pilibu kakwa mwela, tuari sesha, kukweba ati ika reko mumenshi. Bantu unga ya ika la kuria, kukushiri amenshi, amenshi yari panshi sana. Ichiri sumbu chala haba panshi. Panshi nga chai kata panshi paria, ifiri panshi paria fingi. Pari fimatipa, pari ndoti, kairi pari na nefisu wango, ifi endauka. Nga inguena. Ero na nama tigers, kuti ya, ya lepula wangu, isumbu, no kulia. Apart from the processed fish feed, there are alternatives available for smallholder fish farmers. Feed is expensive uh, for the farmers. The formulated feed, that is, is uh, quite expensive. And uh, nutrition is one aspect that pushes up the cost of um, of doing fish farming. So as, as a research station, we are looking at ways in which we can uh, empower fish farmers to make their own feed lo using locally available materials. Yeah, so in front of me I have examples of those um, raw materials that people can use on farm, farm on, on, at the farm. For example, there's rice. There's also soya beans, which is a source of uh, protein. Uh, there's maize. It's a source of carbohydrate as well. And there's also cassava meal. So this also goes to show you that um, you can take advantage of where you are. And as you formulate your feed, um, the most critical aspect is the crude protein level. The smaller the fish is, the higher the protein level that they will need. And the pelleting is very simple. You can just use the mincer. This is something that you use to make your mince meat. So it's some gadget that you can use to pellet your feed. Other challenges in fish farming relate to policy and regulations. The um, Ministry of Fisheries, as defined, was basically looking after capture fisheries. So now that it has been stated that um, we are going into aquaculture, how do we um, initiate or implement the aquaculture revolution? I think first and foremost, there has to be a institutional transformation. Even the personnel who are in the um, uh, Ministry of Fisheries, um, their training has basically been oriented towards uh, fisheries. So there has to be a paradigm shift, there has to be a mindset, there has to be new skills training, uh, especially in terms of the extension officers, because aquaculture is probably more demanding Aquaculture basically start up capital. For a lot of farmers, they need capital to start with. Availability of fingerlings, I mean, that is the seed. And sometimes it's not easily found. There isn't so much production of uh, fingerlings in the country. And for some people, if it's just the acquiring of land where to start building a fish pond and all that. So all those challenges really tend to limit the the investment in the aquaculture. For some people, it's the, the regulation um, processes. They have to apply to do an environmental assessment and uh, um, things like that. So it's not so easy, but um, I think now the fish sector has got of a lot of uh, attention of the highest policy makers. So I think most of those things are now being looked into and uh, eventually we will see a situation where many small and medium farmers are going into aquaculture production. It is undeniable that aquaculture is the future of improved fish production to meet the ever increasing demand. There is a, a, a 5 million fish fund uh, that is going to help uh, develop the sector and empower people be able to learn this and that. Uh, not only that, we're also trying to lobby from cooperating partners if we can be able to get further funding on how we can be able to really create capacity and uh, teach our people to also look at uh, fish as another sector or part of uh, farming. Also through a program of uh, the e-voucher, uh, which uh, the Ministry uh, of Agriculture is introduced, we want to get our fish, uh, our farmers there to also look at the fish as one of the fishing um, uh, sectors or a sector where they can also be able to get uh, funding through the support and the uh, farm input supporter program. Fish demand will continue to increase, offering a great opportunity for investment in aquaculture fisheries. 
particularly for land constrained smallholder farmers. Na kosele shafie aba nandi aba kweba tiba ikala kufimana kweba ti umumuri inchi tu umumuri umumuri ubusu masana uwa kweba ti Increased participation and production from aquaculture by especially small and medium scale sector in suitable areas would be more beneficial as this would significantly contribute to reducing the high rural poverty levels. Based on a research conducted by the Indaba Agricultural Policy Research Institute, IAPRI, which highlights the status, management, and challenges of the fisheries industry in Zambia, the institute recommends, among other things, the urgent need to formulate the fisheries sector policy that will guide the development of the aquaculture and fisheries, increased number of extension officers, increased funding to research and development, promote private sector investment in feed and fingerling production, Increased investment in infrastructure in fishing areas to address marketing challenges and the promotion of aquaculture packs in most potential zones.